What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. We're here in beautiful Southern California. We're about 40 miles east of Los Angeles in Rancho Cucamonga. We're gonna learn how metal coil is painted. And Metal Coders has been great and they've agreed to let us come in and shoot some video. So let's go inside and check it out. Inside, I met plant manager Luis Pasillas and asked him to tell me more about this metal coders facility. This facility's been here since the late 60s. So we receive incoming coil from all over the world. We coat galvanized, galvalone, stainless, aluminum, various different colors, hundreds of colors. Well, I'm really excited to go see the process. So why don't we take a walk and go check it out? Excellent, let's go. After a safety briefing and getting outfitted in PPE, the team and I met up with maintenance engineer manager Yosef Shabir to get acquainted with the coil coating process. Hi, my name is Yusuf Shabir and uh, I am the maintenance engineering manager at Metal Coders of California. Uh, I'm going to walk you guys through the entire process of how a coil coating operation works. At the beginning, we get raw material which is customer owned that comes in our line. This is a 24-6, sometimes 24-7 facility. Throughout the tour, the concept of continuous coil coating was expressed often, and it starts here at the entry mandrels. There are two entry mandrels so that one can be loaded as the other turns. When it's time for the next coil to be painted, a stitch is made between the two coils so the line doesn't have to stop. So this is where we actually make a stitch so when two pieces of metal come together, there's a die in there that joins them. Okay. So this is a, a, a two die stitch. That's why we can run all the way from 0.016 aluminum to 0.060 steel. In order to make a successful stitch, the metal is run through a set of vertical rollers called an accumulator tower that moves up and down to feed the rest of the line during a stitch. So the whole reason we have the accumulator tower is so that because this is a continuous operation, when the operator is making a stitch, only the entry section comes to a stop. But the rest of the line, including the accumulator tower, will continue to run. So that's when the tower will start coming down as he's making a stitch. Uh, we run 400 feet per minute, which gives the operator seven seconds to make a stitch at that line speed. After passing through the entry accumulator, the metal hits a set of steering rolls that make sure the coil is centered properly before entering the cleaning sections. So we have six tanks. The first three tanks are our cleaner tanks, where you remove all the debris, the oil, the rust, whatever the metal comes in with. The metal is cleaned, then it's rinsed from tank number four to tank number six. It comes out of these cleaner tanks and it goes through a leveler. Uh, the leveler helps us in, in deburring the metal if there are damaged edges, if there are any small dents in the metal. Uh, from the leveler, it goes through a chem treat. It's one of the most important processes because if there's no chem treat, then the paint and the primer will not adhere to the surface of the metal. From the chem treat, it goes to a chem oven, which we also call it an IR oven, where you uh, dry the chemical. After the infrared oven heats the metal, the coil travels over a long span to allow the chem treat to cure before applying primer. So this is the first part of the process where primer is actually applied directly uh, to the surface of the metal. Like you see, this is a forward coating system. Primer is picked up from the paint pan. Uh, it goes through the pickup rolls. It's applied on the applicator roll. And the applicator roll is kissing it to the metal surface. The operators do a fabulous job at making sure that the thickness of the paint has to be just right. If not, it will start blistering in the oven. When a stitch comes through, an operator stands by to open the coder heads to allow the stitch to pass before applying paint on the next coil. The material used to stitch the coil is called a lead strip. It's a piece of waste material that has to be long enough to run the entire line which takes around 10 to 15 minutes to get through. From the primer coater, the coil passes through a primer oven that cures the material. All the oven temperatures are set and monitored by the quality control department to ensure constant repeatability. 
A quench tank sprays deionized water on the metal to cool the material before being centered by another steering roll and entering the finish coater. Meanwhile in the finish room, operators are working quickly to make a paint change as a stitch passes through. Paint choices are customer specified. The paint is agitated before it's applied in the finish coater. Chemicals like titanium dioxide need this agitation so the paint will stick to the metal. The operator tests the paint consistency and amount, then pumps it into the pan where the pickup roller can begin the top coat process. It's important to get the top coat consistency right, otherwise it could ruin someone's material. This is tested by quality control on every order. The metal enters another oven and set of quench tanks to cure the top coat using convection heat and cool the material with deionized water. The finished oven is similar to the primer oven, but it has one extra zone to make sure the coil reaches peak metal temperature in order to cure fully. A final steering roll preps the metal for the exit accumulator, which is the same concept as the entry accumulator, but works on the opposite cycle. The lead strip is removed from the coil before it's wound on the rewind mandrill and taken off the operation. Lastly, Yosef took us into the quality control lab to demonstrate how Metal Coders maintains quality and consistency with every order. All right, so this is again one of the most important steps in the process as it also essentially becomes one of the last line of defenses to make sure that every coil that is painted in our facility is checked for all their physical properties of adhesion, all their paint properties to make sure that the paint doesn't crack and it passes through all these tests that uh, you've seen. In our process, we warranty our material somewhere between 10 years and 30 years. So as a part of this process, all those retained samples that you see are also kept for a period of 30 years uh, before they're discarded as a part of the process. So every single test has a specific uh, you know, objective. So for example, when you do the T-bend test, you're making sure that the paint, uh, it, it does not deform or crack at the bends. And there are different kinds of bends. You have the 1T, the 2Ts. Uh, when you do the, the MEK test, that test tells you about if there's enough chem treat on it and if the paint is already stuck and bit into the primer. If not, it'll start ripping off. Uh, when they do the impact test, that's to make sure that the paint can handle that amount of force when applied on the material. There's also a salt test, salt spray test that they do to make sure that the material uh, does not corrode uh, when it is exposed to uh, atmospheric conditions of UV radiation, when it's exposed to uh, salty air if it's, uh, if it's installed on a building next to an ocean. But uh, so those tests are again very specific. Uh, they are generally done by the paint vendors to make sure that the paint adheres to all these standards. And here the tests that we do to make sure that the paint is within its color specification. So this meter shows that to you, make sure that uh, it is not off color and there's enough repeatability in the process. So if we paint six coils, all six of them will be exactly identical to the color that it produces under UV and, and all the other atmospheric conditions. In this process, as you see, you make a decision based on the sample that you get in the beginning of the coil, and that's industry standard. So every coil that we test, and it goes to the line, that basically tells you how stringent the process on the line has to be to ensure that the end quality is as expected as by the customer. And there you have it. If quality is at top of mind through painting coil, slitting material, roll forming panels, and every step it takes to manufacture a metal roof, you can be assured the end product will adhere to the same quality. Make sure you know where your material is coming from and how it is being painted. Huge thanks to Metal Coders and Lewis, Yosef, and Edward for showing us around. Thank you for joining us here. Make sure you subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel, comment down below with any questions. As always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you again next time.